Here is an A grade question on hypothesis testing. This question is worth 7 marks. My commutes to work 5 days a week on a train. She does 2 journeys a day. Over a long period of time she finds that the train is late 20% of the time. A new company takes over the train service my uses. My thinks that the service will be late more often. In the first week of the new service the train is late 3 times. You may assume that the number of times the train is late in a week has a binomial distribution. Test at the 5% level of significance whether or not there is evidence that there is an increase in the number of times the train is late. State your hypothesis clearly. Okay ladies and gents, if you could pause the video, have a go at the question and then play the video. Whenever you have a hypothesis testing question ladies and gents, it is very important that you know how to identify if the test is a one tail test or a two tail test. For a one tail test, the examiner will usually use words like increase, decrease, etc. For a two-tail test, the examiner will usually use words like change, different, alter, etc. Now to answer this particular problem, we have two different methods. I'm going to start off with method one. Let's have a look at method one. Firstly, we have a very important word within the paragraph and that word is increase. The word increase implies that the test that we're looking at is a one-tailed test. In particular, we have a right-hand tail, in short, RHT. It's a right-hand tail because of the increase. Now, whenever you do a hypothesis testing, it's useful to break it down into steps. So step number one, you need to write down the test statistic. So let x be the number of times the train is late. Step number two, we need to write down the distribution for x. x has a binomial distribution with n equal 10, p equals 0 0.2. The reason why n is equal to 10 is because we are told that Mike commutes to work 5 days a week on a train and she does 2 journeys a day, so 5 times 2 is 10. Step number 3, we need to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now the null hypothesis is represented by h naught. It is what we assume to be correct. In the question we are told that over a long period of time she finds that the train is late 20% of the time, hence h naught represents p is equal to 0 0.2. H1 is the alternative hypothesis. This is the hypothesis that we're trying to test. We are testing for an increase, therefore h1 represents p is greater than 0 0.2. Step number four, we need to calculate a probability and that probability is x is greater than or equal to 3. The reason why it's free, because we are told that in the first week of the new service, the train is late three times, hence free. The reason why it's greater than is because if you go back to the inequality in H1, we have greater than, therefore greater than, and you must include equal. Now, we know that probability x is greater than or equal to 3 is the same as writing 1 minus probability x is less than 3 which is equivalent to 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 2. Now, probability x is less than or equal to 2 can be calculated using the binomial CD button. Using the binomial CD button, probability x is less than or equal to 2 is 0 0.6778. So I can write 1 minus... 0 0.6778 and if I put this into my calculator I get 0 0.3222 which is greater than the significance level 0 0.05. If the calculated probability is less than or equal to the significance level then in this particular case we reject h naught but accept H1. If the calculated probability is greater than the significance level, 
In this case, we accept h0, but reject h1. Important fact. Probability x is greater than or equal to 3 is equal to 0 0.3222, which is more than the significance level. Hence, we need to accept h0, but reject h1. Now we can write a conclusion in step number 5. So step number 5, how do we write our conclusion? Well, we are rejecting h1, hence we are rejecting the increase. So we need to write there is insufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that you can fill in the rest by looking at what's written over here. So there is an increase in the number of times the train is late. We can just copy that out. So there is an insufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that there is an increase in the number of times the train is late. A lot of students forget to write the conclusion. If you don't write the conclusion, you will lose a mark. So that there completes method one. Moving on to method two, which is the critical region method. The steps in the hypothesis testing remain the same apart from step number four. In step number four, I need to find the critical region. To find a critical region, I need to first work out the critical value. So I'll be working out the critical value. I can call it C, which is the lowest value such that probability X is greater than or equal to C is less than or equal to the significance level 0.05. To find C, I need to use the binomial cumulative distribution function table, which is in the formula booklet on page number 29. The binomial cumulative distribution function table is only valid for probabilities of the form less than or equal to. This probability is of the form greater than or equal to. Therefore, I need to rewrite this probability so that it is of the form less than or equal to in order to use the binomial cumulative distribution function table. Now, I'm going to start off with something very basic. Probability x is greater than or equal to, say, 2. Over here, I'm going to write probability x is greater than or equal to c to see the relationship between these two. Now, we know that probability x is greater than or equal to 2 can be rewritten as 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 1. So what have I done to the 2? Well, I've just subtracted 1 from the 2. Hence, this probability here can be rewritten as 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1 using this particular concept. So now I'm going to go back to what I have over here. I can rewrite probability x is greater than or equal to c as 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1, which has to be less than or equal to 0 0.05. Now, I make probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1 the subject. And if I do this, I get probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 0.95. When we divide by negative, we need to flip the inner quality. Very important. Now, the c minus 1 represents a little x in the binomial cumulative distribution function table. We need to work out the smallest value of x, which represents c minus 1, such that probability x is less than or equal to c minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 0.95. Here is the binomial cumulative distribution function table. I'm interested in n equal 10 and p equal 0 
I need to start from here. What I'll be doing now is working out the lowest value for x, such that the probability in my table is bigger than 0 0.95. This probability is not bigger than 0 0.95. Not bigger than 0 0.95. No, no, yes. Okay, so the lowest value of x for which the probability in the table is bigger than 0 0.95 is just x equal 4. We have that x is equal to 4. This implies that c minus 1 is equal to 4, which implies that c is equal to 5. So critical region CR shorthand will just be what we have over here. It is x is greater than or equal to 5. If the observed value falls in the critical region, then we have to reject h0 but accept h1. If it does not fall in the critical region, then we have to accept h0 but reject h1. In this question, the observed value is 3 because it says in the first week of the new service, the train is late three times. Now, 3 is not in the critical region, which is x is greater than or equal to 5. Therefore, we have to accept h0, but reject h1. And the final step is step number 5. We write our conclusion. There is insufficient evidence at the 5% significance level that there is an increase in the number of times the train is late. And that there, guys, completes method 2. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.